relatively easy and uh, you know it were uh, they were from the topics which we have already discussed so just give me a quick thumbs up uh, you know so that i can know that my audio video is all going smooth everyone can you all give me a quick thumbs up great great so let us start with uh, without wasting time let us start with the dama questions which we got and uh, uh, please remember students this is a recall session so i might not able uh, to tell the exact question which you got in the uh, exam paper or the images may also vary so i request all of you to please correct me wherever i am wrong or if any uh, you know the data given in the question is less just keep me updating so that we can go ahead and we can uh, make a proper question okay so the first question which i came to know about uh, was a question uh, which was something like this in which of the following we have non scarring type of alopecia and students told me that the question was a multiple choice question so i think you have a few more question a few more options which says that uh, you know 1 2 and 3 is positive or like that so this was the question so what can be the answer this is a very simple question which we got and it is a direct repeat from the inict may 2023 as well as a very similar question came in the inict uh, 2022 november also so uh, i think uh, here i don't have to explain much the non scarring type of alopecia if you remember we have discussed that uh, the alopecia areatas anagen effluvium and uh, the androgenic alopecias so the first three and uh, the t which starts with t is telogen effluvium trichotillomania and tinea capitis non inflammatory type so the frontal fibrosing alopecia it's a classical example of scarring alopecias and uh, in this patient you see fibrosis which is present little bit on the anterior part it is considered to be a variant or a syndrome associated with lichen planus so please remember this is this type of alopecia is a scarring type of alopecia and the answer of this question will be uh, option number a option number c and option number d the b option which is frontal fibrosing alopecia it is only uh, one option which is an example of scarring type of alopecia so just let me know whether there was an except given in the question or this was a multiple choice question because a lot of students told me that uh, we have to pick multiple options here and uh, so thank you sharan thank you for uh, the uh, i i got this uh, from a lot of students that whatever we have discussed in our notes uh, while we were discussing tnds or while we were, we were doing some fast track revisions everything came from our notes only so i was very happy when i saw the paper uh especially dermatology was something which was you know like a uh, stress buster all the questions were the very expected questions right chalo now coming to the next question now here uh there was a image given in the question and uh i don't know whether this was the exact image or not but students told me that there was an ulcer which is present on the inner canthus of the eye slightly going on to the nose so this was the image which i thought could be the most possible image so this you can see that there's a ulcer with a necrosis in the center the ulcer which is present uh, above a line joining the angle of the mouth and the tracheus this area is a very common site for development of basal cell carcinoma now again please remember students there was a very similar question which came in the exam in the last year or last to last year so basal cell carcinoma very frequently repeat topic it's the most common cutaneous malignancy and one of the commonest trigger is sunlight so you usually see the lesions uh, of bcc on the face now what is the clinical feature it starts with a nodule associated telangiectasia and slowly this nodule ulcerate to form a very classical rodent ulcer it has a beaded rolled out margins now this ulcer it is a locally invasive uh, tumor locally invasive ulcer it neither metastasized through blood or through lymphatic so it is locally aggressive and that is why you call call it as rodent ulcer okay so this is a very easy question uh yes uh, i totally agree with you uh, uh, the every question each and every question was from our notes so i hope you all were able to do this now let's move to the next question coming to the next question which we had now here few students told me that uh, the age of the patient was also given that it was a middle aged or young individual who presented with a itchy rash now can you just remember and tell me whether the rash was itchy or not because few students told me that it was written asymptomatic rash but please remember whether it is itchy or asymptomatic the answer will not change now here in this image you can see a very classical distribution of the lesions can you see this lesions they are distributed in a 
inverted fir tree or a Christmas tree pattern. And if you see this image here in the small size, this is a very classical, uh, you know, a colorate uh, scale associated with a herald patch. So if you have these options, the correct answer is Christmas tree appearance or colorate scale in a patient of pityriasis rosea. Okay. So please remember, students, the answer of this question. Again, this was a repeat. If you have seen INICT May 2023, they have asked you a question on Christmas tree appearance. And if anybody has attended my session in NAMS eMedicos app, we have discussed, we have, uh, you know, make a special point and we have discussed that the Christmas tree pattern or fur tree pattern on the trunk, <coughs> it is very classical of Pityriasis rosea. <coughs> Okay, so thank you all of you. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you all of you for, uh, you know, I'm very happy that you have attended all the sessions and all those sessions they have helped you in answering the questions. Okay, Chalo. so the answer of this question. So students are telling me that the uh, the rash was asymptomatic. So again, I told you it can be asymptomatic also. The rash of pityriasis rosea can be itchy also. And that is why sometimes we treat these patients by giving antihistaminics. You give some symptomatic treatment. There is no antiviral required. So this is a question from Petriasis rosea ka crash. Okay, done. Coming to the next question. Again, a repeat question. <clears throat> now the question was a 13-year-old obese girl presented with velvety plaque on the neck. Now I have not got the other options yet. Students told me that acanthosis nigricans and in bracket they have written insulin resistance. Please remember, if you look at this rash, it's a very classical velvety rash. And if you notice, it is present on the flexures like neck, like groin, like axilla, like intermemory areas. So please remember, if you see a velvety plaque in an obese individual, wherever you have metabolic syndromes like obesity, diabetes mellitus, PCODs, in these individuals, sometimes there is a thickening on their flexures and this is known as acanthosis nigricans. There are two types of acanthosis nigricans. One is known as acanthosis nigricans benign version. This is seen in young adults which is associated with metabolic syndrome. There is one more condition which is known as acanthosis nigricans maligna. It is a malignant form which is seen in elderly individual. And can anybody tell me what is that malignancy which is associated? What is that malignancy? That malignancy is gastric adenocarcinoma. So, acanthosis nigricans is also a paraneoplastic dermatosis if you see this type of rash in the adult patient. Okay. So, so thank you. Uh, thank you, Sharda. Thank you, all of you. <clears throat> so, yes, as everybody says, dams rock. And, you know, like uh, everybody here, they are working very hard to give you the exact and the best things which are expected in your exams. Okay. So, uh, one of the options, Abhilasha is helping me with the options. So, can you tell me other options also? One of the options was Cushing syndromes or uh, uh, one of the options was Cushing syndrome. And what about the other options? The answer will not change. Uh, you can just tell me the options so that whenever I make a proper session, I can put all that options here. Okay. Great. Great. So, the answer was acanthosis nigricans in this particular question. Now, coming to the third or sorry, the next question. Now, here there is a little bit confusion. Few students told me that there was a case history given that a patient with flaccid bulla and oral lesions presented with supra basal split and the following clinical picture. What is the diagnosis? And few students told me that they have directly given that the row of tombstone appearance is seen in. So, can you help me with this? <clears throat> so, thank you, Mama. Thank you. Can you help me with this uh, question also? Row of tombstone appearance is seen in. I think it's a very easy question. I always ask my students that whenever you get a histopathology question, it is our duty in the exam to mark the dermal epidermal junction. Always concentrate on the dermo epidermal junction. Once you know your DE junction, you will know the exact pathology, whether it is intraepidermal or subepidermal. You can see here that the pathology is the intraepidermal just above the uh, stratum uh, base in a layer. So this is your supra basal split. Supra basal split, the stratum base cell, it remains intact to the basement membrane. And this appearance of intact stratum base is known as row of tombstone appearance. Why do you see intact stratum base Because of intact hemidesmosome, which is not affected in the patients of pemphigus vulgaris. 
so the stratum basal cells they remain intact they remain attached to the basement membrane and this appearance is seen in pemphigus vulgaris okay this appearance is seen in pemphigus vulgaris so row of tombstone appearance it's a feature of pemphigus vulgaris okay row of tombstone is a feature of pemphigus vulgaris coming to the next uh, this was another question which i got to know from the students that the question was apocrine sweat glands they are present on which part of the body so if you remember whenever we are discussing about the sweat glands we have discussed that there are two type of sweat glands one is eccrine and another is apocrine type of sweat gland eccrine and apocrine eccrine sweat glands they are uh, related with the thermoregulation they are present since birth and they are present all over the body but apocrine gland they are related to or they have the function of olfactory communication and they are only functional at the time of puberty now the location of apocrine gland is only on three areas axilla then you have areola and then you have groin so one of the best option which we could get is the axilla okay so this is a very easy question you know like uh, somebody some of my one of my students told me that the first question which he got was a derma question the first question of his paper was derma question and that was i think row of tombstone so he felt very good and confident because once you get you know if the first few questions of your exam they are from the topic which you have read it actually give you a lot of confidence and you know automatically your remaining paper your your level of confidence level of answering will improve so i'm very happy that derma could help you although the number of questions were not very much but whatever we got it was all from our notes okay so i think this was the last question which i got if i'm missing out on any questions i request all of you to please write on the chat section so that whenever i make a final uh, you know dermatology question Uh, of fine i c t it can help me out there okay so i hope this was a, a very short and a beneficial session to all of you so please give me a quick thumbs up if dermatology was clear just give me a quick thumbs up all of you and then i can uh, i think i can wind up my session it was a very brief session we don't have much questions to discuss here so okay yes yes there was one one more question uh which was a direct immunofluorescence that was also told to me by one of the student but i was not very sure so few students told me that there was a image which shows some uh, you know some black and green lining so that is a image of direct immunofluorescence so if you get any such image although i don't have any image right now with me to show you but i think dif Uh, you must be uh, you know knowing the exact picture how does it appears we have read it with pemphigus vulgaris it has a fish net pattern with bullous pemphigoid it is a linear lesion so something like that was a direct question from the immunofluorescence technique so i think again we don't need any more discussions over there it was a very easy question direct immunofluorescence technique which is done to locate the site of antibody attachment so that was one question which i think i've missed okay so it was a okay it was a picture of the linear deposits of igg very nice very nice okay <clears throat> chal so thank you all of you and have a nice day just give me a quick thumbs up all of you those who have done the dama questions right so that i can simply wind up my session